Hello guys, Jordan here from Tools for Sparks. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about this, my Fluke clamp meter. This is a tool that I find absolutely essential as an electrician, especially when it comes to doing fault finding jobs. And I've had this little one for a while now. I've really made good use of it. So I'm gonna open it up and show you what it's all about. So you've got this nice fluke case here, first of all, it's quite sturdy. You've got this hook to hang it off things with. Uh, this, well, let me just open it all out and show you everything that comes, comes with it. So. So in here you have the Fluke 325 True RMS clamp meter and it has various functions. So right now it's in the off position. If you flick it to the V symbol, this will give you AC or DC voltage reading. And you can get that voltage reading using these leads. So you simply plug in your leads underneath, the red to the red socket, the black to the black socket, and then using the probes, you probe onto the thing that you want to test and you will get a voltage reading. And this button is simply a way of switching between AC and DC. So that's really handy. And for anyone who does any kind of fault finding, especially with electronics, or appliances, things like that, this comes in really handy. Now it has a backlight as well, so by pressing this little light button, you can just turn the backlight on if you're working in the dark, that's always helpful. So that's the voltage setting. Now it can go up to 600 volts, um, and the black is the common or neutral, and the red is the live or positive. If you switch over to the next setting, this is an ohms setting. So it will measure resistance. And this again is really good for fault finding. For example, today I used it for measuring the resistance of an oven element to find out whether the element was still intact or whether it was faulty. And using this, I found that the element was actually open circuit and it was faulty. So to zero out your leads, you just put the two leads together. And as you can see, it has not only a visual reading, but also an audible reading. It does that bleep. So that's quite handy. And if you press them together and then press and hold the zero button, you can zero your leads out. Now it measures in ohms and kilo ohms. So depending on the reading that you get, for example, if I, uh, it's not gonna do it now, but if I wet my fingers, for example, there we go. I've wet my fingers and just pinched them together. And now you can see we've got a reading of 20, 30 kilo ohms because it's reading through the moisture on my fingers. So it automatically adapts and you just need to pay attention to the little symbol there, whether it's showing you ohms or kilo ohms, because that's quite important. Um, what you can do is measure, if you can press hold and it will tell you the highest reading, for example. But that's mainly, mainly use the, the hold setting for, volt, for voltage and amps. So I'll show you that a bit later. Uh, this is a Farad setting. So you can it see it's measuring here uh, microfarads. So to be perfectly honest, I've never used this function before. Maybe you can let me know in the comments if you use it and what you use it for. Um, 
because that's something that's a little bit beyond my remit. I've never actually had to use that function before. Now, temperature. Uh, I actually used this for the first time today and I'll show you how to do it. So it comes with this temperature sensor, which I've sort of uncoiled, but basically it's a wire that's insulated and it's got a little uninsulated bit at the end. And what you do is, is you plug it in and the little bit at the end gives you the temperature reading. So if I put my fingers on it, for example, warm it up to my body temperature, you can see that goes up straight away. Um, I use this today in doing fault finding on an oven because I wondered if the thermostat was gone in the oven. So I stuck this inside the oven to measure what temperature the actual internal uh, of the oven was reading at. There may be many other uses for this. What they are, I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments if you have another use for this. But it's quite a cool little gadget, I must admit. And it can come in handy from time to time. Uh, but one of the most important and valuable functions of this is the amps setting. And this is a current transformer. So you've got your clamp meter function. And basically, when you put a live or neutral conductor or even an earth conductor through here by itself, the current transformer that's in here will read how many amps of current are traveling through that one conductor. So, for example, if this was a mains tail that was feeding my entire installation, I could clamp around that and it would tell me exactly how much current and load was being taken by this particular installation. So this can be really handy when you have an installation that you wanna measure maximum demand, for example. You could clamp this around your tail and then go around, switch loads of appliances on, do a sort of an, an average of what the most things might be running in a day and then you can see how much the maximum draw of current is on the installation. And that's where this min max setting comes in quite handy, because if you press that, now that's set on max, what it'll do is whenever it hits a new peak, it will stay at that peak. So if it goes up to 10 amps and then it goes down to 5 amps and 4 amps and 6 amps, it'll stay at 10 amps on the screen. And that, But then if it goes up to 12 amps, then it'll stay on 12 amps on the screen. And so if I leave this plugged in for an hour, for example, after an hour I can come back and it'll show me the maximum amount of amps that was pulled at any one time during that hour. Um, and again, you can do this on a DC setting. You can also do a minimum. So if you want to know the minimum load that was being pulled at any one time, you can find that out as well. So it's really quite handy. There's also this Hertz setting, which I'm guessing is used for testing work on motors and things like that. Um, again, I've never really used this function, so I can't say for sure what its benefits are, but let me know in the comments if you've used it and what you've used it for. The amp setting, going back to that, is up to 400 amps range. So for most of your domestic, commercial, and even industrial work, it's quite adequate for what you will need. You do have as well these um, covers for the probes just to make them GS38 compliant. So if you stick those on when you're doing any work on live conductors, then that will uh, protect you and enable you to comply with GS38. Also, just talking about the power of this, it has batteries. So it, it just has two AAA batteries inside and the whole thing runs off that. And you've just got a flat screwdriver cover. You just turn that, the cover comes off, and you've got your two AAA batteries in there, which you just need to change every so often if the battery says that it's getting low. But to be honest, I've had this for quite a while now, and I've never had to change the battery. So they do last a long time. As always, guys, if you enjoy our videos, please hit a thumbs up. 
and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out because we post videos here every week. And if you check the link in the description below for this video, you can see where you can get one of these for yourselves. Thanks for watching and have a great day.